How do you recover from a breakup if she was out of your league? Well, I understand where the guy's coming from. So, because I've often said typically about one to three people a decade you really click with that I found that you meet. And that's kind of like where you feel a soul connection. You complete their sentences, they complete yours. You just jive on so many levels. You have similar goals, similar values, lots of things in common. You have similar experiences. And I mean, let's all of us, and that includes our, our friendships as well. It's like how often do you meet really good people that are good for you, good to you, good for your soul, and they're with you for a lot of years. It's They're very rare. And so when you meet, a, you know, for like guys in this situation, they met somebody they really liked and they screwed it up typically. And it's hard to get over that. Rejection breeds obsession. And for a guy that's thinking, man, the last time I met a girl that I felt that way about was like five years ago. And the thought of another five years before I get another shot with somebody that we click with, like that's not a pleasant thought. And that's why those guys want to know what they can do to make themselves attractive, potentially to reattract her if there, there is a chance to do that. But the best thing is focus on your mission, your purpose, the things you want in life. If she doesn't want to keep you, it's like we were talking about earlier with Bobby. It's like, you know, dude's paralyzed. He gets rejected a lot more now than he, he used to when he was walking. And he, he, you guys got to move on to the next. Because as you become happier, you're going to smile more. You're going to become more attractive. You're going to meet more people. Women are going to feel safer around you just because you're a happy person. And you'll have other choices. You'll have other options. And like the best medicine for losing a girl you really liked is another one that knocks your socks off and that's why you got to get out and live live your life so those things can happen and when you oftentimes what will happen is sometimes it's a few months sometimes it's a few weeks sometimes it might be many years you might have a, a girl that you screwed up with contact you after like seven eight years and get in touch and apologize for blowing you off because after all the guys they've met since you, it's like you were the nicest to them and you treated them the best. And they're genuinely, they got humbled by life. They they got their heart broken a number of times and maybe somebody treated them the same way that they treated you. And they they reach back out. And what, what you want them to find is a better version of you, a more attractive version of you, a happier version of you, a guy that's got, you know, that's, that's why I talk about with 3% man is you got to read it 10 to 50 times and you got to apply it because as you apply it and you get better, I mean, if a girl comes back in six months or seven years or six weeks, whatever it happens to be, if you've taken the things you learn in the book and have applied them and you've gotten better and you've got some success and you start to see the patterns and things that I talk about in the book, you see them in the real world. And especially if you got a, a, an extra, another girl or two that you're, you're dating, maybe you might be hooking up with one or, or both of them. You're going to have a lot more swagger. You're going to have more confidence. You're going to feel better about yourself. So when this girl that you really like does come back into your life, you're not going to be so soft and so much of a pushover or kind of like the beta male that you were in the past. And that often is enough to where she'll start to pursue you more because her attraction is growing. Because you weren't demolished when she told you no. You weren't demolished when she moved on or rejected you or dumped you or whatever it happened to be. And that's what confidence is. It's being able to recover from those things. What do I have to get done today before I go to bed in my career, my life, my business, take care of my body, whatever it happens to be. Making phone calls at work, making the extra phone calls or point, setting the appointments with whatever it happens to be. You got to find a way to do the little things. And so before you go to bed each night, you should be asking yourself, what do I have to get done before I go to bed? And get it done. And when you do that, you put your head in your pillow at night. You can sleep easy because you were very productive during the day. My question is, what makes someone out of your league? Really, that's attraction's not a choice. I mean, Mother Nature handles that. There's just you know, what's interesting is like when you look at couples, is they tend to have. We all tend to be attracted to people that have the same facial structure is us and you can kind of look the nose or the eyes or the spacing in the eyes and oftentimes see similarities in couples like 
you know, I, I got a, a friend, he's got real big eyes and his wife's got real big eyes and their noses are kind of, you know, the symmetry of their faces are, are very similar. And I, I pointed, pointed that out to him, but it's like when you look through your life, typically people we find attractive are people have the same kind of facial structure as us. So mother nature's already handled the attraction. So there's, you know, the key is what happens with most guys is they talk, you know, you girls have all had this experience where you met a guy you really liked at first. And then the more you talk to him or the more you spend time with him, instead of your interest going up, it went totally down mm-hmm. to the point where your feelings were totally platonic. It's one of those things where it's like, it happens based on my experience. It happens <clears throat> unexpectedly. And it just doesn't happen with everyone. If you're excited about something that you're not usually excited about, especially when you're going out on a date with someone, it for me, it would be it would be a good sign that maybe this person could be, you know, someone that you truly connect with or you just have that feeling that this person, you know. Is for you, if that makes any sense. Well, the the, uh, the out of your league that Caroline was asking about, it's like you pedestalize the person. And, you know, the guy starts treating the girl like a celebrity, which I'm sure you guys have all, I mean, see the comments. Yeah. They, you guys get pedestalized and they, they basically act unworthy, like they're not good enough. And if a dude treats you like a celebrity long enough and communicates like he doesn't think he's worthy and always say, wow, you're the prettiest girl I've ever kissed or going on a date with it might be cute once or two times but if every time you go out with him he's just constantly expressing like he doesn't deserve to be there he doesn't feel worthy and that's just a self-perception that the guy has that's the story that he tells himself about how attractive he is and because he's never had the kind of woman that he really wanted he feels like oh they're out of my league but at the end of the day if they were attracted initially and they he passed the physical attraction test but then later turned her off because he felt unworthy i mean at the end of the day if you go through life and you feel unworthy especially with the women that you date eventually you guys are going to agree with them and go you know what you are right you're not worthy you're only or you, you know i was doing an email today and a guy even came right out and said do you only think of me as a friend after he'd already slept with the girl and that's not a confidence inducing statement that's not a guy that feels like he deserves to be there or or like he's a true equal. That's a guy that's communicating, hey, you, you probably don't find me attractive enough. It's the opposite of confidence. Whereas a confident guy, that, that thought's not really going to even cross his mind. And so it really is a state of mind. And that was a thing that I realized in my book, like the girl we were talking about earlier that, <laughs> that had the, um, I was out on a date with another girl and her attitude totally um changed Fuck, i don't even remember how i lost my train of thought when he started <laughs> <laughs> thanks sonny oh okay so yeah so it, it's basically you it's a mind it's fuck course. basically you tell yourself that you're not worthy and we're all we all act consistently with how we view ourselves to be and it doesn't matter whether the view is accurate or not for that guy the the questioner the viewer he's he's like this woman's too good for me she's too hot for me he believes that and for me, I'd never experienced, at least up until that point with that particular woman, getting into a relationship with the one I really felt deeply a soul connection with. And like, we just, even now, we, we still have so much fun when we talk or we get, we get together. And those connections are rare, but the problems I created in the past that basically ruined my chances with women that I felt that way about. I realized it was just I'm psyching myself out. It's like like I said earlier, it's a mind fuck. You you tell yourself a story that you're not worthy, you're not adequate, and your actions, your words, the vibe, everything communicates that. And you know, you guys love a guy that's confident and sure of himself. Yeah. And if he's constantly communicating that he doesn't deserve to be there and doesn't feel that way, eventually you're gonna be like I mean, if he was able to score the girl, doesn't that already show itself? Like, doesn't that prove his, you know, that he can have someone? Because if you're with a girl and you think you're not he worthy, have enough life experience with that success. So that so seduction was a one-time event. So, you know, say he's thirty years old. That's thirty years, and he had one day, one date in his whole life that he was like, I, I crushed it like I had the best ever. I don't feel like 
because when you're with somebody you feel that way about you don't feel like you're missing out you feel like you already got the best that you can get and you're content you don't feel like you need anything or anything is lacking and when you walk down the street with her on your arm you're proud of her you're proud that she's there you want everybody to know that she's yours and vice versa she wants the whole world to know that you're her guy 